enjoying the show, you can help others find it and enjoy it too by giving us a five-star rating or review. If you feel like reaching out to us with a question or comment, you can send us an email at mywifetherd at gmail.com. And don't forget to visit our website at mywifethedietitian.com, as well as our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Enjoy the show. It's Rob and Sandra from My Wife the Dietitian, and this is Nutrition Nuggets. Hi, Rob. Hello, Sandra. Hi, it's been the 12 days of Christmas. And sure has, just, holy. <laughs> just over that, so let's do 12 ways to exercise. How about 12 ways to nap? <laughs> Yeah, it's been a, it kind of throws off the schedule a little bit, eh? It sure does. Oh, totally. Well, we talked about immune health on uh, just this past one, immune health for the holidays, but immune health through all year long. And exercise is a big part of that and moving your body. Regularly. Yeah, because society teaches us that aging makes you fragile, but don't believe it. Aging starts when movement and action stop. So if you can have strength, agility, balance, and flexibility, you will have a long and happy and good life with good health. Yeah. People should take the words, I'm too old for that, out of their vocabulary. Yeah. Because that's that's when you start to age. When you start saying things like that, that's just like the first nail in the coffin. Yeah, because you're telling yourself. Mm -hmm, You're repeating it and it repeats itself in your mind that, okay, I'm too old. I'm too old. But really, moving our body isn't too hard. So we're going to talk about 12 different ways to get those uh, exercise guidelines that we hopefully have all heard, 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise through the week. So that's like two and a half hours a week or about 22 minutes a day. Well, that's it, eh? 22 minutes. Yeah, Yeah. I guess that's about, yeah, that's right, 150 It's like low-hanging fruit, really. I mean, like walking to the mailbox is almost 22 minutes. Does that count? Is that one of them? It is. Well, let's do this. Okay, so brisk walking. To the mailbox? Outside? or Assuming your mailbox isn't like attached to the front of your house. (laughs) You know, in our neighborhood, we have one of those community mailboxes where you have to like walk around the block to get your mail. So that's what Sandra's referring to. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people have that kind of system, I think. And I mean, even just standing up and moving for 10 minutes three times a day, that would constitute some good movement. But so brisk walking is number one. What uh, counts as brisk? Just moving faster than a a, a stroll, I guess. You got to like feel like you're getting somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, There's lots of different definitions, but like VO2, like the... Like they just called your plane for uh, for (laughs) for takeoff. That's brisk walking. Yeah, that's brisk walking. That's running. Yeah. There you <laughs> You're go. Hilarious. Well, it's almost a little bit hard to talk, like have a normal conversation if you're brisk walking because then your heart rate's up. Right. Okay. So that's a good rule of thumb. Next one is cycling. Cycling. Yeah. So like just either a stationary bike or um, road bike or mountain biking or, you know, that is a way to get the cardiovascular system going. It doesn't it's not as good for the bones because it, there's no gravity, right? Like swimming. And we'll talk about that. So this is, you know, as we, as we age and we should be trying to do different activities. So not the same thing all the time, but Mm -hmm. try to get some of that flexibility and the strength and the cardiovascular and balance and agility. So all those factors should come into when you're moving your body yeah and just a quick plug for electric bikes they're they're becoming quite the uh quite the thing these days and if you haven't tried one they're super cool and a lot of people think oh it's doing all the work for you you're not going to get a workout but the trick with an electric bike is that it actually allows you to go for a longer ride and you know yeah it helps you at, at times but it gets you out doing it right Totally. And I love the, my electric yeah, bike. Yeah, Sanders rides hers all the time. I don't have one, but I've ridden them and I get the appeal. And a lot of people, especially older people, it, it allows them to get out and get riding. So it's something to look into if it's of interest. Cycling, that is. I like that. I like that you said that. And I'm actually going to roll that into number three. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that, but commuting. So like sometimes people like jump in their car and commute to work. So if there's a way to park further away from your work or if you can 
take a public transit and then get off a stop early and walk. Or if you have the opportunity to get on your e-bike and ride to work, those are all active transportation and a good way to get some daily activity in if you go to work every day and if you kind of instead of drive from your front door to the work's front door can you park a bit further away or actively commute like bike or walk or public transit Mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of cities set up better now for biking than they used to be Mm-hmm. Yeah, true, true with the, the designated bike lanes. Yeah, and, there's, yeah, there's a lot better opportunities now than there used to be. So Absolutely. Get out there. Yeah, yeah. So that is number three. Number four is running or jogging. I mean, that takes a little bit more oomph. <laughs> you don't have to go as far, though. Right. The thing, the thing I like about running versus cycling I can run around my neighborhood and get a really good workout. Where cycling, I'd have to go like five times as far. I'd, ha- I'd have to cover more ground to get the same amount of workout. So, right. it, Yeah, absolutely. Right. And that is one running or jogging will get your heart rate up really quickly, like you said. And also it's on your, um, it's weight bearing because there's gravity like pounding on the pavement. And so that actually protects the bones, so protect your skeleton with that uh, force of gravity. So it's good for that, but it's not so good if you have problems with your joints or hips or knees, and um, and it's a struggle for you to do anything, like even walking is painful, then running or jogging would probably be out the window for you. Mm-hmm. And good shoes do make a difference. Buy yourself a decent pair of running shoes. And get them fitted properly. I remember I did this running clinic years ago where I joined a little, uh, like, learn how to run kind of group. And uh, the shoe store where I bought my shoes, they they, uh, they helped me figure out, like, how my feet were shaped and all the things to make sure you had the right kind of shoes for how how you move. Yeah. And it makes a difference, so. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes you can get insoles or orthotics to help with corrections uh, with your feet, so that's always part of it too. So Mm -hmm. getting it fitted is a great idea. Yeah. Makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, The next one is one that's another anti-gravity one is swimming. So it is good for um, easing. It's easy on the joints, but it, because you don't use gravity with it, uh, it's good for flexibility, but not great for bone strengthening exercise. So Mm -hmm. if you are a big swimmer, that's wonderful. You're getting the cardiovascular workout and um, the flexibility and agility and all that, but maybe do other workouts to help with that bone health aspect. Yeah. And swimming is a great workout. It doesn't take much. I mean, you do a few laps in the pool and you're winded if you're, if you're not a regular swimmer. So it's, it's a good way to get your cardio. And you were a lifeguard when you were I did a lot of swimming. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in a pool and, and lifeguarded and went all through my swimming things. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. Physically it's, it's, it's swimming is a lot of work. So it's, it's good for you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's so good. Awesome. And then number six, fitness classes. So there's aerobics and Zumba started doing that again. I love it. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's kind of like dance and strength training and, I like aerobics and spin classes and there's uh, swimming aerobics. So all those types of uh, fitness classes, if you like, if it motivates you to be in a group of other people doing the workout, then that's a good way to do it. Or you can do them online too. There's lots of fitness kind of videos or um, YouTube kind of. Yeah. Online stuff. Zoom fitness type things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. There's also yoga and Pilates, which you can either do at home or in a class setting. Right. And number seven, if you live close to uh, forests and kind of the back backwoods or hiking, that's what I'm talking about. So number seven is hiking. It's really good for um, cardiovascular health again. And it's just like you get forest bathing, right? Like you get out into nature and it does something to the brain. It's so good for our our mental health. And then you're still, you're walking and you're getting some activity there. Maybe you walk the dog in the forest. So uh, hiking is a great activity. 
Yeah. I, I like trails that are a loop. So you don't have to like go out and then come back on the same trail and cover the same ground. It's nice if you can find a thing, uh, find a place to go where you can like do a giant loop, start to finish and cover new ground the whole way. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly. And it's funny. Um, it's easier to go flat, like a train track kind of route because it's all flat, but it's actually really good for us to do some hills and up and down. It's really good for our quads and it's mm-hmm. good for, um, yeah, that's good for our heart rate and and active living. Absolutely. Number eight is dancing. So it's similar to the aerobics, but actual dancing. So salsa or um, however you want to dance at home or maybe a class with your partner. Fun. <laughs> I got a twinkle in my eye here, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. So dancing. Okay, number nine is home workout gym. Like uh, maybe you do like the high intensity interval training. So the hit, or you just do your, um, schedule and routine of your different, um, strength training, your barbells, whatever you have set up in your home gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever way you work out at home. Cause you have one of those. uh, We got a bit of everything. Yeah. I prefer that to go into the gym. It's just, I don't know. That's just me. But, yeah, yeah, it's nice to have that at your fingertips and you can just kind of fit it in whenever. And and if you have a home, you have a home gym. That's what I've heard a quote because you can grab some cans of beans, hopefully you have cans of beans, and you can lift those to help with your muscle. And, you know, it's so important, the weight-bearing activity. No, there's Yeah, there's so many different ways. I just saw one on the internet the other day. With it. it was just a chair, doing all these different exercises on a chair. But you don't even need that. You can do sit-ups and push-ups and and basic body weight exercises just to get your body moving. There's all sorts of different ideas out there. If you look online, you'll find something. You don't need a fancy weight machine or you don't even need weights. I mean, your body's a weight, so you just, you know. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's the whole thing with weight-bearing exercise. It's good for bone health to help with your skeleton to keep that strong, Mm -hmm. your muscle strength, so your using your muscle, you, you know, break it down and, and it builds back up and you gain strength and it's good for your joint health. So helping with the flexibility of the joints, cardiovascular, it helps because you're getting, you're breathing deeper and the blood's flowing. It's actually great for weight management because of the, it helps with your metabolism and it's good for balance and coordination and posture improvement plus functional capacity. So basically, you know, just doing anything around the house, like twisting, bending, lifting, reaching, all those activities that you do, if you're doing some weight-bearing exercises throughout the week, uh, you're keeping your body supple and flexible so that you can just do normal things like bringing groceries home and putting the food away Like those things are something, if you don't move your body, then it gets harder to do those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and it sneaks up on you and before you know it, you can't do it. And then it's too late to, you know, well, it's not too late, but you got a lot of work to do at that point to get yourself back into regular shape again. So. Yeah. Yeah. And as we age, we have to work harder at it. Exactly. Yeah. uh, So don't let it, don't let it slide. That's right. That's right. So the next one is sports. So if you like soccer or basketball, hockey, any racket sports, badminton, squash, pickleball. So all these different types of um, sports get you moving. And it's like usually you're with other people maybe and like that type of sport. And that's really good for your community aspect, the social aspect, plus uh, just the if you're doing racket sports, hand-eye coordination, same with um, basketball and hockey and soccer, like they're all, they're all really good for your brain in different ways, plus your body. Mm-hmm. And then there's all the winter sports too, since we're in uh, winter time now. It's raining where we are, but uh, th- there is snow in other parts of the world and uh, we do get it here too. It's fun to go out and play in the snow and ski and uh, snowshoe and frolic exactly that's the that's number 12 is like the active hobbies and if Mm, you have an active hobby so yeah skiing or snowshoeing or um, cross-country skiing or surfing or kayaking or supping you stand up paddle boarding 
um, or any wind sports, like those are all active hobbies. So that is something. So any activity that gets you in the flow state where you're feeling like, you know, time stands still or you don't even think about the time, that will help you keep doing that sport. So I think like active hobbies or sports that you're with other people, you're not actually thinking that you're working out, you're just trying to keep up with what's going on. And so you get in a flow state, it's just this, this state of um, bliss, almost like you don't think about the clock, or you don't Mm -hmm. think about time. And if you get in that state, when you're being active, you're going to more likely like stick with it and keep doing it. Because that's the thing with activity, like we want to keep active into older years and later in life so that you can maintain that physical health and mental health and psychological health and social health. So it's all related. Exactly. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So those are uh, 12 different ways to try to get active uh, in the new year, I guess we're talking about because next week is uh, New Year's Day and we want to find ways to start our new year with some new spring in our step. That sounds good. Yeah. Start off fresh. Start on a fresh foot. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That, exactly. You got it. Something like that anyway. Yeah. Planting the seeds for um, some new growth for the new year. No, we could just keep going. Here. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. Check out the website if you're looking for more information or you want something to read in your, uh, your time off or while you're standing on the treadmill. Or you can listen to the podcast while you're doing that too. Lots of uh, lots of information there. If you have questions or want to know anything about us or about the podcast or you got ideas for the show, you can give us an email at mywifetherd at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We've got stuff coming up there quite often. So be sure to check those out. Give us a like, thumbs up, that sort of thing. It's always appreciated. And don't forget to rate and review the show. That helps us keep things moving forward here. So that would be great if you could do that as well. And we will be back next Monday with our New Year's Day episode with Tamara Lechner from The Happiness Reset. Really cool, really cool episode. So be sure to tune in for that next week. And in the meantime, have a great week, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on My Wife the Dietitian. If you like what you heard, don't be shy. Leave us a comment or review and be sure to share our podcast with your friends. If you'd like to hear more, hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on our social media pages for updates, episode trailers, and other odds and ends. For more info and links on what we discussed on today's episode, check the show notes. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun-filled episode. 